In this video, we're going to look at another penny stock. It's another biopharmaceutical stock. Not many people are talking about it. Analysts are saying it has huge upside potential and it has no FDA approval yet. So it is highly risky. Welcome back to the video. If you're new here, please head down and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future content coming out. There'll be plenty of it. Plenty of stock market chatter, plenty of penny stocks, plenty of growth stocks, plenty of dividend stocks, everything, all the juicy stuff, everything you might like. And while you're down there, give it a little like for me. It really helps out the channel and helps push the message out there. Gives the videos a bit more exposure. In this video, I'm going to look at another penny stock. Not many people are talking about it. I've seen one video on it and did a bit of digging and looked at what the analysts are saying. It's a drug development company that has got no licensing or FDA approval as yet and are going through the clinical stages. One of their projects is up to stage three. So we will see in the coming year or so how that pans out, the results of that final stage and whether we get some positive news from that clinical study, phase three clinical study, will determine where the stock goes up or down. So this is highly risky, highly speculative stock. I'll lay my cards on the table. Table. I have just bought into the stock a very small amount into the high, not into the high growth portfolio because my high growth portfolio is on trading 212 and trading 212 doesn't support it. I've had to buy it in my IG account that do support this particular stock. So it's in my IG account. I will consider my high risk portfolio, but just so you know, I am involved in the stock mostly because it's a high risk play. So it's going into my high risk portfolio but the analyst targets are pretty ambitious. So we'll see what happens over the next year. The company's doing some great things. We are just waiting for some positive news on these clinical trials. Because it's such a high risk penny stock, I've got to tell you, don't take this as advice. Don't buy in yourself. Make sure you do your own homework and your own due diligence before you buy into this penny stock. But without going any further, the ticker symbol is BLRX. And the company name is BioLine RX. As I said, it is a drug development company. It has two main products out at the moment, going through clinical phases, clinical trials, phases one to three. One of the drugs at the moment is at phase three. And hopefully after that, with positive news, some sort of approval and licensing for this particular drug will be imminent. We'll jump in and have a quick look at the company, a little bit look up, a little, a little look about the products. Again, it's a pharmaceutical company, so I don't know a lot about this. I won't pretend to know a lot about this, but what they're doing is looking pretty good, and the analysts seem to think that it's going somewhere. So we'll jump in, we'll have a look at the analysts and what they're saying, and we'll have a look at the company and the website themselves. Right, so straight in this time with the portfolio again because I have actually bought into this company. So here we are, I am in, I'm in at $2.78 and I'm nearly 4% up already, which is just, you know, these penny stocks move so much and that was literally just the early one today. So that's just to show you that. I'm not gonna ramble on a great deal with these. Let me just quickly show you the company. So Bioline RX Limited is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on oncology. The company's business model is quite nice that it's uh, directing straight away to its business model is great is to in license novel compounds develop them through clinical stages and then partner with pharmaceutical companies for further clinical development and or commercialization so these guys are just getting these drugs through the clinical stages clinical trials and then they're going to partner with pharmaceutical companies to then develop them further and commercialize them on that quickly on their website in partnering they are partnered with Merck so Merck is a huge US and Canadian pharmaceutical company so it's great that these guys are partnering with them in actual fact they partnered in 2016 there's here to run a phase 2 study in pancreatic cancer using a combination of the drugs that they've, they're using they're developing so that's good that they've got Merck as a partner here heading back to about so the company's lead program so the one they're focusing all their efforts on at the moment in terms of developing is how you how you pronounce that I have no idea my toxophortide let's just call it that is a cancer therapy platform currently being evaluated in a phase 2A study for the treatment of pancreatic cancer in combination with Keytruda and chemotherapy and a collaboration agreement with MSD Merck. 
Motixa Fortide, or Motixa Fortide, or Motia Fortide, I don't know how to pronounce that, is also being evaluated in a phase three study in stem cell mobilization for autologous bone marrow transplantation. So again, as I said out there, I'm not gonna pretend I know everything that's going on here, but I do begin to understand this a bit more the more biopharmaceutical, clinical stage biopharmaceutical companies I look into. These guys are no different. They're clinical stage only. They have no approval yet, FDA approval but they are doing the clinical studies to therefore get the approval to then partner with some sort of pharmaceutical company to then develop it further, get licensing, get FDA approval and take it commercial. So, so they're similar to other pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical companies that I've looked into. So on the website here, we've got the clinical studies section of the website. We've got the drug that they're working with most closely, Motixafortide, <laughs> if I'm saying that right. And then we've got another one down here, AGI-134. This one they've done a lot less with. Uh, in fact, they've got just the one study, phase 1-2A, with this drug, whereas Motixafortide, they've done all these studies, started from the bottom and got up to phase three. So they're a bit more advanced with this one in particular, which means they may and will hopefully be closer to getting it commercialized, getting some sort of approval and partnering with a biopharmaceutical company to, uh, I guess, to take it public, almost like a merger. I've got a Seeking Alpha article up here and it's just come up with uh, breaking news. Robin Hood's GameStop buy limit now down to one. <laughs> Brilliant. So if we just scroll down here, we've got a little bit about everything you might want to know about the company, the management, who's running the play. So it's Philip Serlin, who's done some quite, quite good things in the past. But more interestingly, the thing I'm more interested in, certainly from a um, investor's point of view and a look into the future, I guess, is their financial situation. So there's no revenue in the company at the moment, but we've got some interesting things here. So they're expected to re reach a minus 25 million for financial year 2020, which is fine, on top of a nine month 2020 cash position of 21 million in january this is huge in january 2021 byline rx announced the closing of a 34 and a half million dollar israel adr stock deal bringing cash enough for one to two years so they can burn through cash up until at least the first half of 2022. So we've got a bit of a runway here. They've closed this deal. They can now burn cash at a rate of knots and they're expected to start bringing in revenue from 2022. So we can burn through cash at this rate without any more funding to get to where they need to be to start bringing in revenue. That gives us one to two years lead time and we will have some news, if not results, from the clinical studies from this drug, Motixafortide, by then, ideally. Revenues are non-existent, we know that to date, but are expected to reach 14 and a half million in 2022, growing by three-year compound annual growth rate of 45% and a five-year compound annual growth rate of 29% between 2022 and 2027, reaching approximately 147 million by 2027. And interestingly here, it goes on to say, uh, consisting of expected product sales for the drug, which is great. Profitability is expected by financial year end 2023 with an EPS target of 30 cents a share and revenue target of 49 million. So the main things here are the fact that we've got a bit of a runway, one to two years. So we've got time to see if we can get approval for this drug the toxic fortide and we've got expected revenues and expected profitability so we've got expected profitability by 2023 and we've got expected revenue by 2022 which is good so there is some good news in that we've not got any revenue at the moment but we are expecting it which is great and this one to two years lead time uh, of cash burn that gives us time as i said to get some sort of good news and some approval for these products it's either do or die it either won't and that's it you've lost your money or it will and the stock price is going to rock it now from my point of view if we're hoping which i think we are byline's upcoming catalysts include metoxifortide's q1 2021 regulatory next step announcement and the other drug that they're dealing with uh second half of 2021 initial efficiency results for its phase one to a uh, which is the uh if we pop back to here that this study that's this study here so we'll get the results of that which we're cu they're currently recruiting for so some good news in these 
in the first half Q1 of 2021 and the second half of 2021. As an investor, as a shorter play, I'm putting my money into this, hoping for a good result and that share price rockets, I can then get out. What their kind of two, three year price target, we've got it here. Uh, the author of this article on Seeking Alpha, who is Gunnar Lane Hardy, is saying it's a buy at a two to three year price target of $8.92. So I'm not looking two to three years, I'm looking for probably a year, get out, and the move may be sooner than that. So for me, it's looking, it's still very speculative, but it could be a good option. If we have a quick look at the price targets from the analyst, which is probably more what you're here to see, buy alone RX Limited, it's at $2.89 at the moment, I bought it at $2.78. We've got three buys, it's considered a strong buy from each, from three analysts, and a price target average of $12.67. We've got a lowest price target here of $5. Now, at $2.78, you're nearly doubling your money anyway on the lowest price target. We've then got a $12.67 and we've got a $22. I mean, that would be absolutely outrageous. If we can get up to $22 on a buy-in at $2.78, at happy days, absolutely amazing. We've even got a 336, 337 effectively upside, percent upside based on the average price target from these analysts. So this is what, uh, this is what you came for really. And if you go to Yahoo Finance, We've got a similar similar thing. In fact, since October, it's been a buy for these guys. And we've got in January, we've got two, uh, three buys and one strong buy. We're on the lower end of the one to two target. So, or the higher end, depending on which way you look at it. But we're definitely in the buy, an average of 12.68. Again, lows of five, highs of 22. That just echoes what tip ranks, tip ranks. You gotta be very careful what you say there or how you say it. So this is the main thing I was looking at. I looked at a lot of different penny stocks and the results of these analysts price targets were far better than anything else. And I had a look into the company, thought it was looking pretty good. It's very speculative still, we know that, but it could be a potentially a good play. I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna it's gonna 5X, 6X, 10X, it's just stupid. It might not, but based on these analysts, it's looking like there is certainly some upside to be had. So that's it guys, as I said, I am in it. I own a hundred pounds or so worth of this stock. Uh, it's not a huge amount because I'm putting much smaller amounts into my high risk portfolio, only 400 pounds this month. And I want to spread that across at least three, maybe four stocks. I've actually averaged up on BNGO and CCIV as well. BNGO came down recently from some pretty decent highs up to $13 down to around 10. So I've averaged up, I was in a BNGO at $2.50, but I think it's still got a way to go and it's definitely still going places. So I've averaged up on that and put quite a bit more in. And CCIV, we're getting closer to this merger. I'm still confident it's gonna happen. And so I've averaged up as well as I had the funds to do so. The more I sit on that one, the more confident I'm getting with the merger and CCIV anyway. So I've averaged up and put quite a bit more into that one as well. I'll let you know the other two that I'll be buying into as and when I decide to buy into them. I don't know what they're going to be yet. I haven't looked into it, but I'll keep you firmly in the loop. That's it for this video, guys. As I said, do like the video if you enjoyed the content and it's giving you something food for thought, if it's giving you something to think about, i.e. BLRX, and please like the video. It really, really helps out the channel and subscribe for all future content. I'll leave that video there, guys. It won't be a huge long one and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.